please don't try to drown the person that taught you how to swim you will drown the man of God that held your hand when you were nothing when nobody will have touched you with the longest of poles the man that stood there stayed with you while you were having your babies the altar that blessed you don't take the testimony to another place sometimes ministry can be a thankless job don't join the bastard ministry don't be an absalom whose father raised and then he stood at the gate destroyed the same father when he was going to die i read it recently he was caught his head was caught between the earth and the heaven that was the way he died before Joab now <laughs> go and read it he was hanging between heaven and the earth be careful mama pastor I could not say thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You have said it all, Mama Pastor. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. I tell people, okay, we have to be grateful for any single thing we get from other people. We have to be. We must never stop saying thank you to any person who um, gave us a helping hand when we were in a dire need. We should never ever disregard a help from someone, no matter how small that help might have been. We should never do that. I see people who have been helped by other people come out and say, ah, that's something that safe. What, what is he even talking about? Because of the small help you gave me, is that why you're talking like this to me? And I'm like, come on, come on, you cannot say that. You cannot say that. That person might not have been nicer to you now, but remember, the help he gave to you, the help she gave to you might have saved you that time he gave it or she gave it. Might have been the thing that saved you up till now. Because without it, we don't know what your life might have become by now. We don't know. We can never, ever say it's because of the little thing you did. That is why you are talking to me like this. We can never ever say this. And please, avoid saying it. No matter how they provoke you, avoid saying it. I know that some people will help you and they want to hold the help over your head. I know that very well. But remember, it's not about them who are holding the help above your head. It's about how you react to them who are holding the head above your head that matters a lot. It, if someone kept on reminding me of the help they gave me when I needed it the most, my response to them would be, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My response should never be to fight back at them, to strike back at them, or to kick back at them. No, 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 no. Don't do it that way. Don't do it. Mama has said it. Never, ever try to do that. Don't do it. If you do that, you will fail. You will fail big time. Remember, you must always be thankful. Say thank you to those people that fed you when no one could feed you. Say thank you to those people that clawed you when no one did that for you. Say thank you to that your poor mama and poor papa who bought shoes or slippers for you when you were running around bare feet. Say thank you to that your mom who stood by your side, who couldn't sleep, because you were sick at night and she had to look after you. Your father 
who had to run up and down looking for a solution to a problem. Your mom, who did not eat because you were sick, who, do not, who, who did not sleep because you were not feeling well, who had, who had to stay all night at the hospital because she was worried about your condition. Say thank you to them, my brothers and sisters. Say thank you to them. Say thank you to them. I meet people who are not in good terms with their parents. And I'm like, how come? I, I, let, let me just take a step back. There are parents who father children and did not carry out their responsibilities. I know that. I know that. But the point is, no matter what has happened to you before, always seek for peace. Always seek for peace. If you are a grown up person right now and your parents did not do what you expected of them to do, you can always forgive them and let it go. I know I'm, this, I'm, 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 I'm moving away from the conversation, but I'm just saying that it is always a healthy thing not to carry people in your heart. That is just what I want to say. I know I have really like moved away from the conversation, but I love my parents, okay? I really do. I think that they did a fantastic job giving the little they had, and they, they raised me and my siblings. They struggled, and uh, we came out to be well off. For that, I owed all my gratitude to them. I believe without them, I would be nothing. Without them, I would have had nothing. So that, that is just for me. But anyway, let's continue with our conversation for today. There's a video I want us to watch about our man of God, Apostle John Sulemanu. I find myself attracted to him recently and uh, doing more and more vid uh, uh, videos about him. I don't know why. I don't know why. But anyway, let's just uh, watch the video to see what he did. And uh, you can share your own thought and opinion with us in the comment section below. Because I think after watching this video, there is a lot you have to say. Trust me. <laughs> watch. Yes. The Lord said to tell you that the struggles are over. Amen. When it comes to prayer, you can pray. When it comes to fasting, you can fast. But the more you pray, the more you fast, the more it appears that the problem increases. Exactly. The more you pray, the more you fast, the more you, it appears that the mountains increases. Exactly. And you know, preaching to this like I preach your life. It's like my message is your life. Exactly. And God wants to help you. This one is dead. Yeah, Can I pray? Sin. Can I pray? Can I pray? Is your son? My brother's son. Can I pray? It's your brother's son? Yes, in UK. In UK? Yes. Now, where's your brother now? He's in the UK. Is he a believer? Yes. Is he a believer? Nominal believer. Nominal? Yes. Kai. 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 This one is innocent and somebody trying to, to get back at a father and kill the son. Somebody say, let me deal with this man. And let me deal with this man. I would deal with this man and took apple of eyes. Intelligent boy. Took the son. And they make it appear like it's natural. Inside the pool. Inside water. Hey! Inside water. They say this one drowned. He did not drown. No, he didn't drown. This is not drown. This, this is physical report of somebody that drowned. But spiritually, he's not drowned. <laughs> this one is not, this one, the powers of the marine kingdom. As he entered the water, they twisted him. Snuff life. It's not the water that killed him. It's not the water that killed him. This one is not what? 
There was autopsy was done, there was no water in his lungs. He said autopsy was done, there was no water in his lungs. He went there was no water in his lungs. He went to swim with his friends, two hundred of them. He went to swim with his friends. Swim. Yes. Clap your autopsy. hands. Clap your hands for Jesus. Wait. How many of them? 200 in Oxford 200. University. Oxford University. Oxford University. The, the last day they were closing, they said they should go and swim. They went and swam. Everybody came out. They saw his things and they waited for 45 minutes. They saw the body up and then they called the police. The police came. They took him to the hospital. They did autopsy. Others came out. Yes. And they saw all his body came up. Yes. After 45 minutes, autopsy was done. There was no water in his lungs and they tried to see if he was manhandled. Nothing of the thing was done and you said the first thing you said was that somebody wanted to uh, assail the father it's true the father was beaten two months and his jaw bone was broken his ears were broken bleeding and then after two months he died so i'm just confirming the first prophecy that you gave I, like I said, there's a difference, amen, praise the Lord. There's a difference between when, when you have been taught, when you are a science student, you've been taught in the classrooms, after a while you go into the field, that's what they call the practicals. When it's about lectures and just talking about things, you can have arguments. What is Apostle Suleiman preaching? It's fake preaching. Once you are born again, wickedness cannot come after you. That is classroom. That's not practical. Okay? Once you are born again, you are in Christ. Have you not seen all that? They are firing themselves. Here is a pastor carrying my picture. Suleiman is what he's saying here is not correct. Once you are a Christian, I am in the field. You are in your room with your ring light. I am in the field. I'm seeing these things daily. They take people's picture, put needle on the picture, and people start having migraine. I am in the field. These are real. But the power of God is more real. So to say these things are not real is to, is to, is to make people die. Say, look at this sister now. Somebody carry a picture, put in a shrine. And you say such people, we should spare them. <laughs> then we should spare them and leave them and just allow them to do what they want to do. It will not stand. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 9 and 10. He says, Associate yourself, all you people. You shall be broken to pieces. Speak the word, it shall not stand, for the Lord is with us. Every ungodly gathering against you, I break it to pieces. <laughs> and I'm asking. I'm asking the Lord today by the power of the Spirit. Look at me. You have suffered. I'm asking the Lord by the power of the Spirit that all your years that the canker worm, the locust, the caterpillar is eating, restored. Pick him up. Tell him there will be vindications and there will be confessions. If you put his ear down, there will be confession. For one they took for, from him, seven of their own will go. I'm seeing the son the Lord says I should pray for. Well, you know me, right? If you are a regular viewer of this channel, you know me. You know, you know my take on this their whole call prophecy and the, whatever they call it. I just think that it's just one mind trick. You know, when I was way more younger, right? I have always believed that uh, magician could really perform magic, like 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 they could really do it for real, right? But when I grew up, I realized that it was all just an illusion, right? Um, perception becomes your reality if you are really convinced that something is what it is, right? <laughs> so they use a mind trick on us that we barely even can figure out. You know, even in the movies, you know, they have what they call stunt double, right? They have double. And uh, when you're watching a movie, and the image of the main character is in your mind. Even when they are using a double to do to perform a stunt, you cannot really tell 
that is Adobo, right? Until you are really into the act of making movies, that you get to understand that there actually is something called a stuntman or a double, isn't it? That is the same thing that these men of God are doing. Remember, they study about psychology. They understand human behavior very well. And when they start talking, they give very, very vague, vague and general statements and see your reaction to it, and they know where to go next, right? So they start by saying, um, fine boy, nice boy, he died in, in a pool, in a water. <laughs> and then they see what you react to, and then they continue from there. They are so smart. They are so, so smart. And my point is, they have done this for many, many years, and it has always worked for them. Because somehow, Africans are very spiritual people. Anything about spirituality works on us 100%. Like, if someone just came out there and told you that the reason you are struggling and not succeeding is because that your uncle beside you is the reason he doesn't like you. And if we are not careful, you might fall for it. Or if you are just doing your own thing, and a man of God said that the reason you've been struggling so hard and not seeing any progress is because that poor mama has stolen your stars. Remember, that was the same poor mama who gave you water when you were way more younger and came back from school. It was the same poor mama who gave you food to eat when you were younger. And that poor mama did not kill you back then. It was the same poor mama that saw you sitting outside under the sun, came and asked you to come and sleep in her house and even gave you water to drink or gave you food to eat or gave you something to wear. That poor mama, that neighbor did not kill you back then. She wasn't a wish back then. Just now that you are way more grown up and you are in a church and a pastor who doesn't even know anything about you and that poor mama will start telling you something and then you out of stupidity and, and, and foolishness will believe them. Will believe them. It was the same thing a lady gave two million plus naira to a man of God. The lady went to the hospital and she was diagnosed with cancer, I think maybe third stage. And according to what she said, that the doctor said her days were numbered and that she has to start putting her things in order. Rather than her going on her knees, making peace with God, and then going out there and asking for forgiveness to, uh, from all those she has offended and uh, forgiving all those who have offended her, she turned to a man of God. And according to her, the man of God in Nigeria, in Abuja, will cure her from her third stage cancer. And the man of God demanded money from her to perform some rituals. And she borrowed the money and gave it to the man of God. You went to someone who has been trained on what was wrong with you. And the person told you exactly what was wrong with you. You didn't believe them. You went to a man of God who has no knowledge about what was wrong with you, who, has, who hasn't learned a thing about what was wrong with you. And the man of God said something different. And you believe the man of God. And you took money and gave it to them. And according to them, that man of God could heal you. Isn't that foolishness? Isn't that stupidity, number one? Isn't it? So you see, my brothers and sisters, you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful. So many of God have realized that we Africans are gullible people. And we Africans will believe whatever they tell us. And so they have weaponized it against us. They are using it to further their own selfish agendas on our own expense. They are using us to enrich themselves. They are using us to further their ministry. They are using us to elevate themselves. They don't care about us. They have never cared about us. 
all they have cared is about their ministry. And when they are building their ministry, when they are carrying out their plans, they don't care how many people fall along the way. They don't care. Whoever that falls along the way will be trampled on and then the rest will just move on. It is not like, let's wait for those people who are falling behind. No, 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 no. Or let's um, look into those people who are down to see what is wrong with them. No, 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 no. That's not, that, that's, that's not their, their, their goal. Their goal is to move ahead, is to build their ministry, is to make it a bigger ministry in the whole world, and that's exactly what they would do. They don't care what they need to do in order to achieve that. They don't care. They really do not care. So when I see things like this, I get really, really offended because many gullible people will go out there and start pointing fingers at innocent people, at their innocent neighbors. I hate it. And that is why I have always have issues with the man of God opposed to Michael Awakpo because according to him, everyone hates you. Everyone wants to see you fall. Nobody wants to see you succeed. And uh, wherever you are going or whatever you are doing, people are just waiting for you to fall. That is all what they plan for you to fail, which is such a big lie. Just total manipulation. And I hate it. I really, really hate it. They come out here and they make outrageous testimonies and they accuse innocent people and they point fingers at innocent uh, um, people. Those people who have helped you when you had nothing. Those people who have been there for you when, when, when they didn't even know you. Those people who took care of you, those neighbors who gave you food, those fathers, those mothers who stood by you. They didn't kill you back then. They did not harm you back then. They shelter you. They clothe you. Now that you are grown up, and now that you've decided to align yourself with those, with those crooked men of God, those liars, you are letting yourself been fooled by them. You're letting yourself be taken for a right by them. You are letting yourself be, be, be turned into an entity that just is there to serve their purposes. You will have yourself to blame. You will have only yourself to blame. As an adult, if you are not smart enough to sit through this, you will have only yourself to blame.